Hi, this is Andrew Lee. We are at the Wikimania session on 10 years of Wikidata, how it all started and where it is going. And we're here with Lydia Pincher and Danny Granicic. Hi, I'm Lydia, uh, doing the product management for Wikidata and have been with Wikidata since it started about 10 years ago. And I'm Danny. I am with the Wikimedia Foundation working on abstract Wikipedia and Wikifunctions. And um, I've been the founder of Wikidata those 10 years back. Great. And Danny, since you're the founder of Wikidata, tell us a little bit like how you remember how it all started. The very first thing that I remember is uh, about this is that uh, there was a call for Wikimania 2005, and it was in Frankfurt. And um, both me and Markus Crutch back then were um, PhD students in Karlsruhe, and we both were Wikipedians. We knew that. So we were like, oh, we want to go to this new conference. So we saw the call for papers, and we're like, let's submit something where we connect our research topic, which was the semantic web together with Wikipedia, and we didn't exactly know what it means, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> so we wrote a paper, submitted it to Frankfurt. It was accepted. It was actually the first uh, paper presented at the conference. And this is how the Semantic Media Wiki um, idea started. And we were from the beginning, we really wanted to make it a Semantic Wikipedia. Um, but this then took a few years to actually get to that place. Beginnings. <laughs> My first memories were sitting in Karlsruhe in a cafe with Benny <laughs> um, to talk about uh, this crazy project he was going to do and that I should be a part of it um, to help with um, community support, um, helping Wikipedians understand what the project is about and so on, and also making sure that the development team knows what's going on in the community. Um, yeah, crazy times and a really cool first job right out of university. Lydia back then was um, also working on Semantic Media Wiki as a, a community manager. And so I knew her from there and I really trusted. So I was approaching her basically with this role of helping us with the community in Wikidata. And uh, I'm super glad that she accepted. <laughs> yeah. And so Semantic Media Wiki definitely was part of the community in providing kind of database like or structured data type functions to the traditional Media Wiki. But how did Wikidata get its uh, footing in terms of approval as a project within the movement? And then why was it with Wikimedia Deutschland? We were tr um, Marcus and I were trying to push for um, um, semantic Wikipedia to happen for a while. And the project has changed over time. So originally, the idea was actually to make each of the Wikipedias individually semantic, to add uh, structured data to each of them. It was, I think, Eric Möller who later suggested that we should have one Wikidata where the different Wikipedias access uh, the data from. And he also actually suggested a name. He um, he got a domain early on before even the whole idea happened. I think he had it also like since the mid-2000s. Uh, we had in general like agreement from the community that this would be a good idea, but no one really believed it would happen. And it took us years to really get to the point of, oh yeah, let's make it happen. And when I finished my PhD, I was like in the in the point where, what do I do next? And one of the funders, it was uh, the Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence, approached me and said, you know, you can actually now have the opportunity to make this happen for real. You you you're in the right time. You don't have any other obligations right now. Um, and they would provide some of the funding. I was then, I had to find the other funder. So AI Squared gave us um, half of the money and I approached um, Google and they uh, agreed to give us some of the money, um, a quarter and the Wikimedia Foundation managed to get a um, quarter secured from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. And then we approached the board of trustees whether it would be okay to do this project. And the board of trustees agreed after talking with them and explaining what this, uh, what this is. And then the question was where to host it. Eric was very careful telling me that the foundation at that point in history wouldn't be the right place to host it. That he, doesn't, he didn't feel like they could pull off this kind of project. And then we were exploring a few different options. And uh, one of them was to have an organization of its own. The money would have been sufficient to actually pull that off. Another one was to approach Wikimedia Deutschland and ask them if they would be interested in hosting that. And Pavel Richter, who was the ED back then, um, agreed for it and was actually quite enthusiastic, understanding that this would be an opportunity for Wikimedia Deutschland to uh, professionalize and change quite a lot by bringing in such a big number of people. Right. And one of the reasons why Wikidata had maybe its initial success of the community was because it managed the site linking, which was a very manual process, right? 
uh, before Wikidata, you'd have to put a long list of links to the bottom of a Wikidata, I'm sorry, a Wikipedia article. So tell us more about that that uptake by the community and how SiteLinks probably was the entree for a lot of the community to Wikidata. So SiteLinks, as you say, maintaining them in each Wikipedia article across all the different language versions um, caused a huge uh, amount of duplication and work that um, Wikipedians didn't like rightfully. Starting with that as a way to solve that one problem um, for Wikipedia editors, especially um, was really helpful in, in gaining that acceptance on the one hand and, and supporting Wikipedia editors uh, especially, but it also helped bootstrap Wikipedia, Wikidata because by creating all these items for all the existing Wikipedia content, we suddenly had a lot of items on Wikidata to start from with really important concepts to cover. Yeah, we bought a lot of goodwill basically with that first step and we changed a little part of Wikipedia quite dramatically. Um, some of the things that you could easily see, for example, in the charts was that the number of edits because of Wikidata dropped dramatically after Wikidata has launched and the sightings were switched on, which first led to a big scare until people understood, oh, well, it's because the bots stopped editing the site links and keeping them up to date across all the 300 language editions. And, uh, but this also means that we made um, human edits much more visible and brought them out of the foreground and all of these things. And the, it, it was in many smaller, English Wikipedia doesn't understand the struggle, but in many smaller Wikipedias, the site link edits were basically the majority of all edits. And when you looked at the history of an article, you just saw bots editing the site links and you didn't even see who else was there editing. And um, this is something that, but, and also they were inconsistent. They were basically always inconsistent, the, the, all the site links to each other. So this is where we bought a lot of uh, goodwill for Wikidata and where I think the first time people realized, oh, well, this is not just some crazy idea that won't happen anywhere, anyway, that it won't go anywhere, um, but this is actually something that's really happening and it's impacting us right now. Right, and it centralized things that made sense to be centralized, right? And then there were no statements at the beginning, just the site links, but then how did it grow from there and the early adopters, who are the early adopters? So among the early adopters were definitely people who were doing work on Wikipedia that was now much more well suited on, on Wikidata. Um, so people who were working a lot on categorizing things, on uh, putting in info boxes and updating them and so on, um, as opposed to the people who care more about actually writing articles and researching them in depth and so on. So I think that was a bit of a move <laughs> of, of the type of people who, who really care about data as opposed to writing uh, long form prose, especially at the beginning. Also, it was at Wikimania in Washington where we asked like which of the communities would like to join us. Uh, first. So it was completely voluntarily in the beginning. And um, we, uh, we got reached out by a number of uh, Wikipedia communities, quite large one, it was Hungarian, Hebrew, Italian, Communities that are traditionally open to this kind of changes, and they were among the first wikis to switch on site links to allow access to wiki data and have it be there in production, which was which was really important for us because it completely validated validated what we were doing. Right, and today you see like Catalan, Basque, all these folks using it in ways that that really benefit those smaller communities, which is great. And this is a big question now: like, how has Wikidata changed in the last ten years since its launch? And and then how has it changed maybe the Wikimedia movement and Wikimedia projects? Lydia? Right. Um, so I think one thing to understand is that at the beginning of Wikidata, it was really perceived as vaporware by a lot of people, right? It's this crazy idea that this team, small team of people had and that they were working on, but maybe it's never going anywhere. Maybe it is, we will see. Um, and it was not very well understood what it's going to be, how it's going to work, um, what kind of impact it has, it's going to have on, on Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects or, and even beyond the movement. So a lot of people projected their biggest hopes into Wikidata and some other people projected their biggest fears <laughs> into Wikidata. And one thing that changed um, as we developed more and more and as the community was building is a deeper understanding of what Wikidata actually is and where it is helpful, where it is not, and what it can be in the future. Uh, 
Um, yeah, when we originally launched Wikidata, it basically didn't have almost any features at all. You could just like create pages with labels and descriptions and site links, and the site links were not even used anywhere. So there were no statements, there was no Wikidata query service, there was no well-defined API and all of these things. And uh, today, if you think of all these parts, you know, as crucial components of Wikidata, but they all launched later. So uh, Wikidata has been developing over those 10 years, thanks to Lydia's le leadership um, in, a, in a really good um, way that uh, led to more and more users being able, you know, creating the Wikidata query service, which personally I thought was completely impossible. I, I'm still amazed that this happened ever. I was, my original plans for Wikidata didn't involve it because I didn't think it, it could work. Um, I was wrong. I was happily, I was wrong. Um, then, uh, then editing lexicographical data to um, to Wikidata, which is a big thing, and I hope this will be able to help the dictionaries a lot. Um, the um, and obviously statements with all the different data types and the usage of descriptions in many many different places, not in the English Wikipedia, unfortunately, but in many other places. Um, uh, all of these things are, I think helping. Wikidata grow and helping also the the movement grow. I mean, as we speak right now, the the object count or the item count is ninety nine point six million in Wikidata. As you said, to be able to query that and come back within seconds is pretty astonishing. Even after we have five plus years of experience with Sparkle and Wikidata query, which brings up the question: like, where do you see it going from here? Certainly, questions about scalability and the stability of services going forward. Maybe Lydia, you want to. You're in the throes of this, you're in the middle of it, so maybe you can answer that first. <laughs> I can try. Um, so I think over the last 10 years, Wikidata has become more and more useful and more and more important for technology we use every day. And I think that should and will continue, right? More and more people will, in some shape or form, um, get knowledge through Wikidata if they know it or not. Um, and what I would like to see is um, to get us to the point where more and more people also contribute to that knowledge. Um, maybe not everyone, but um, I think we have a, a lot of opportunity for a lot more people to, to share in, in um, building that knowledge base that we have and, and maintaining it. So I think that is one important piece. The other important piece is that as more and more people get exposed to our data in some shape or form, in applications and visualizations and services. Um, I think it's really important that we uh, are aware that it's becoming much more important and much more um, crucial that our data is, is good, that it's verified, that it's complete, that it is up to date and so on. And at the same time, um, the, the pressure to manipulate it, just like on, on the big Wikipedia is, is probably gonna um, increase um, because it's gonna be a much more interesting target, let's say. <laughs> so I think that is really important. And the other important piece I think is that I don't want Wikidata to be this one place uh, where open data happens, right? I want a large connected network of places where linked open data happen and that work together and that um, are interconnected and that share data. And that is all the work we're, we're doing with the Wikibase ecosystem where we don't just have a Wikibase installation for Wikidata um, to run this one big instance, but have other people, other institutions, other organizations, be that museums or libraries, uh, for example, uh, call open culture projects that uh, all run their own Wikibase and then interconnect that with Wikidata so that Wikidata isn't that one place where, where all open data has to happen, because I think that's um, not a good position to be in. Great, thank you. Yeah, and I think something most people may not have seen if they weren't following it is the making of Wikibase its own product and ecosystem and community and cloud service, which is pretty amazing as well. Yeah, I fully agree with Lydia on everything she said. In addition, I think something like the Wikidata query service um, needs to figure out how to keep the role it has been using as for growing Wikidata. And um, we need to figure out how to provide the services that the Wikidata query service is currently providing also st uh, stable in the future, given that we are probably going to grow even further. Um, what I am really excited about is how uh, the dictionaries can use um, Wikidata and grow from there. And there's so much duplication across the dictionaries. And I think this is something 
that can very much happen in the next year or two and uh, make a big exciting change there and um and finally, also the Wikisite project is something that um, excites me a lot. And we really need to put resources into that one. There's so much interest from the community, but not so much uptake from some places that could help with making that really happen and really grow into a proper project. And obviously, then there is the work on abstract Wikipedia and Wiki functions, which completely relies on Wikidata. But we will have our own session during Wikimania on that topic. Great, thank you. And what were some of the best memories of working with Wikidata over the years? I think, Denny, so the, the, the story you told of why we have Q numbers in Wikidata, I'll leave it as an exercise for the reader to look that up, which is a great personal story. But Lydia, what, is, what are some of your best memories about Wikidata? Right. So as we were building um, up the project and as we were supporting the community and, and finding its own way, one of the things I always did was um, when something happened in, in the world, something important um, that grabbed people's attention was um, how long would it take for someone to actually update that particular data point in Wikidata? And can I be faster than anyone else? <laughs> And there was this point um, with the election of uh, Pope Benedict where it happened the first time where it was not fast enough and where someone was much faster than me. Um, and that was kind of the point where I thought like, yes, <laughs> we made it. Uh, this this is going to work. This is, this is going to be great. I fully agree with Lydia again. Um, just those stories uh, that are things that, that happen is my favorite example was when I was flying in Europe. I, don't, I forgot the airline, um, but uh, I was sitting there. I was taking a look at the, at the entertainment system with the in-flight information, and suddenly it was saying, oh, this is powered by Wikidata. And I was like, great. I'm in an airplane which is powered by Wikidata. I'm not scary at all. But it's also like super amazing that those things happen. It's like, wow, they are, they, the world out there is using, you know, not just the Googles and the series of the, and the apples of the world, but but also, um, well, okay, an airline isn't particularly a small company, but, you know, also smaller organizations are using this knowledge and doing all kinds of fun things with it. The other thing that, that I really <coughs> love about Wikidata is the community. And um, it has teach um, it has taught me again and again um, to be humble and how much better the community is than any single person really. Um, it's um, I, def I remember distinctly when we were looking for funding for Wikidata. Um, I had a long discussion with a potential funder who was completely aghast by the idea that we would let the community decide on the on the ontology, decide on the um, uh, properties and classes that would be available to Wikidata. Because this just will never work. You have to predefine that. You can't have that done by a layperson and so on. And uh, we eventually lost that funding because we're saying, no, no, we have to leave that with the community and um, leave it there um, because we wouldn't uh, budge on that. So this is not, not something that I found uh, was negotiable at that point. It does keep impressing me. So, I, so one of the things, uh, my favorite edit to Wikidata is um, for the Dragon Spike from the My Little Pony show. Um, and there's an edit that changes Spike from being a dragon to being a fictional dragon. And this just, you know, it shows how much the community cares. It shows the, the quality of the ontology. It shows um, so many things in this little edit. It's just amazing. Besides being also genuinely funny, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that is one of the really core strengths of Wikidata, right? That it is so flexible and open and that a lot of people can do things with it that neither Danny nor I had ever even dreamed about. And that is super powerful and, and always impressive when someone does something with it and you're like, wow, oh, okay, I've never thought of this, but it's really cool. <laughs> Well, thank you both of you for your stewardship of the project and the amazing success that's out there. So uh, we appreciate it very much. And uh, we hope folks will attend Abstract Wikipedia and other talks and be immersed in Wikidata during Wikimania. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much.